Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live stage performance here in Palo Alto, California at theCUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, kicking off our first inaugural SuperCloud event. It's an editorial event we wanted to bring together the best in the business, the smartest, the biggest, the up and coming startups, venture capitalists, everybody to weigh in on this new super cloud trend, the structural change in the cloud computing business. Uh, we're about to run the Ecosystem Speaks, which was a bunch of pre-recorded companies that wanted to get their voices on the record. So stay tuned for the rest of the day, we'll be replaying all that content and they're going to be having some really good commentary and hear what they have to say. I had a chance to interview and so did Dave. Dave, this is our closing segment where we kind of unpack it everything, or kind of digest and report. Um, so much to kind of digest from the conversations today. Um, a wide range of commentary from super cloud operating system to developers are in charge to maybe it's an ops problem or maybe Oracle's a super cloud. I mean, that was debated. So, so much discussion, a lot to unpack. What was your favorite moments? Well, before I get to that, I think I, I, I go back to something that happened at reInvent last year. Nick, Nick Sturiel came up uh, Steve Mullaney from Aviatrix, we're going to hear from him shortly in the, uh, the ecosystem speaks. Nick Stereo's VC said, it's happening. And what he was talking about is this ecosystem is exploding. They're building uh, infrastructure or capabilities on top of the CapEx infrastructure. So, so I think it is happening. I think we confirmed today that you know, super cloud is a thing. It's a very immature thing. And I think the other thing, John, is the, it seems to me that the further you go up the stack, the weaker the business case gets for doing super cloud. We heard from Mariana Tesla. It's like, yeah, you know, we could, it was easier to just do it all on one cloud. This is a, a point that, you know, Adrian Cockroft just made on the panel. And so I think, I think that when you, when you break out the pieces of the stack, I, I think very clearly the infrastructure layer, what we heard from Confluent and HashiCorp and certainly VMware, there's a real problem there. There's a real need at the infrastructure layer. And then even at the data layer, I think Benoit Dajaville did a great job of, you know, he, I was peppering him with all my questions, which I basically was going through the super cloud definition. And they ticked the box on pretty much every one of them, as did, by the way, Ali Goetze. You know, the big difference there is the philosophy of Republicans and Democrats you got open versus closed, not to apply that to either one <laughs> side, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, the similarities are probably greater than Berkeley, the differences. Berkeley, I would probably put them on the Democrats. Yeah, we'll put them on the Democrats side. We'll make Snowflake the Republicans. <laughs> but so, but as, as, as we say, there's a lot of similarities as well in terms of what their objectives are. So, I mean, I thought it was a great program and a really good start to, you know, an industry, you brought up the point about the industry consortium, yeah. asked Kit Colbert yeah. if he thought that was something that was viable and what'd they say, that, that it, Kit, the hyperscale Kit, should lead it? Yeah, they said hyperscale should lead it and also should be an industry consortium to get the voices out there. And I think VMware um, is very humble in how they're putting out their white paper because I think, they know that they can't do it all and that they not have a great track record relative to cloud. And I think, but they have a great track record of loyal install base ops people using VMware, vSphere all the yeah. time. So I think they need a catapult moment where they can catapult to the cloud native, which they've been working on for years under Ragu and the team. So the question on VMware is in, in the light of Broadcom, okay, acquisition of VMware, this is an opportunity or it might not be an opportunity or it might be a spin out or something. I just think VMware's got way too much engineering culture to be ignored, Dave. And I think uh, well, I'm going to watch this very closely because they can pull off some sort of rallying moment. I think they could. And then you hear the up, upstarts like Platform9, Rafi Systems and others. They're all like, yes, we need to unify behind something. There needs to be some sort of standard. You know, we heard the argument of, you know, more uh, standards bodies type thing. So um, it's interesting, maybe the cube could, could be that, but we're going to certainly keep the conversation going. I thought one of the most memorable <laughs> statements was Vittorio said, we, for VMware, we want our cake, we want to eat it too, and we want to lose weight. So they have a lot of <laughs> aspirations there. And then, and I thought Adrian Cockroft said, you know, the devs, they want to get married, they want to marry and everybody. And then, the, and then the, the ops team, they have to deal with the divorce. Yeah. And, and and I thought that was poignant. It's like they want consistency, they want standards, they, they got to be able to scale. And you know, Lori McVitie, I'm not sure you agree with this, I'd have to think about it, but she was basically saying, all we've talked about is devs, devs, devs for the last 10 years. Going forward, we're going to be talking about ops. Yeah, and I think one of the things I learned from this day, um, and looking back and some kind of, I've been sauteing with through all the interviews, if you zoom out, for me, it was the epiphany of 
developers are still in charge. And I, I've, I've said, you know, the developers are doing great, it's an ops security thing. Not sure I, I, I see that the way I was saying before. I think what I learned was um, the refactoring pattern that's emerging, and Sook Ray brought this up from Vertex Ventures with Mariana Tessel. It's a nuanced point, but I think he's right on, which is, the pattern that's emerging is developers want ease of use tooling, they're driving the change, and I think the developers in the DevOps ethos, are ne it's never going to be separated, it's going to be DevOps. That means developers are driving operations and then security. So what I learned was, it's not ops teams leveling up, it's devs redefining what ops is. Mm. And I think that to me is where SuperCloud is going to be interesting. Forcing that, yeah. Forcing the mm -hmm. change because the structural change is open source is thriving, Devs are still in charge, and they still want more developers. Victoria, we need more developers, right? So the developers are in charge, and that's clear. Now, if that happens, if you believe that to be true, the domino effect of that is going to be amazing because then everyone who gets on the wrong side of history on the ops and security side is going to be fighting a trend that may not be fightable. You know, it might be inevitable. And so and the, winners, the winners are the ones that are refactoring their business, like Snowflake. Snowflake is a data warehouse that had nothing to do with Amazon at first. It was the developers who said, I'm going to refactor data warehouse on AWS. That is a developer driven refactorization and a business model. So I think that's the pattern I'm seeing is that this constant refactoring patterns and the developer uh, uh, trajectory is critical. I thought there was another great uh, comment, Maribel Lopez, the, her Lord of the Rings comment, there will be no one ring to rule them all. Now at the same time, Kit Colbert, you know, we asked him straight out, are you the, do you want to be the, the super cloud OS? And he basically said, yeah, we do. Now, of course, they're confined to their, their world, which is a pretty substantial world. Uh, I think, John, the reason why Maribel is, is so correct is security. I think security is a really hard problem to solve. Mm -hmm. You've got, cloud as the first layer of defense, and now you've got multiple clouds, multiple layers of defense, multiple shared responsibility models. You've got different tools for XDR, for, for identity, for governance, for privacy, all within those, those different clouds. I mean, that really is a confusing picture, and I think the hardest, one of the hardest parts yeah. of SuperCloud to solve. Yeah, and I thought the security found G. Rittenhouse, uh, Priyush Sharma from Acurix, which sold to Tenable, and Tony Quay, former head of product at VMware, right. who's now an investor kind of looking for his next gig or what he's going to do next. He's obviously been extremely successful. They brought up the, the OS factor. And the other point that they made I thought was interesting is that a lot of the things to do to solve the complexity is not doable, yeah. it's too much work. So managed services might field the bit. So, and Chris Hoff mentioned on the in Clouderati segment that the higher level services being a managed service and differentiating around the service could be um, the key competitive advantage for whoever does it. I think the other thing is, <laughs> Chris Hoff said, yeah, well, Web3, Metaverse, you know, DAO, super clouds, you know, super cloud, he called it. And this bring, brings up, it, it, it resonates because one of the criticisms that Charles Fitzgerald laid on us was, well, it doesn't help to throw out another term. I actually think it does help. And I think the reason it does help is because it's getting people to think. When you ask people about SuperCloud, they automatically, it, it resonates with them. They, they, they play back what they think is the future of cloud. So SuperCloud really talks to the future of cloud. There's a lot of aspects to it that need to be further defined, further thought out. And we're getting to the point now where we, we can start begin to say, okay, that is super cloud or yep. that isn't super cloud. I think that's really right on. I think super cloud at the end of the day for me, from the simplest way to describe it is making sure that the developer experience is so good that the operations just happen. And Mariana Tessel said she's investing in making their developer experience high velocity, very easy. So if you do that, you have to run on premise and on the cloud. So hybrid really is where the super cloud is going right now. It's not multi-cloud. Multi-cloud was, that was debunked on this session today. I thought that was clear. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think- It's not about multi-cloud, it's about operationally, seamless operations across environments, public cloud to on-premise basically. I think we got consensus across the, the board that multi-cloud, you know, is a symptom, Chuck Witten's thing of multi-cloud by default versus multi, multi-cloud has not been a strategy, Kit Culver said, up until the last couple of years. Yeah, because people said, oh, we got all these multiple clouds, what do we do with it? And we got this mess that we have to solve. Whereas I think super cloud is something that is a strategy. And then the, the other nuance that I keep bringing up is it's industries that are, as part of their digital transformation, are building clouds. Now, whether or not they become super clouds, I, I'm not convinced, I mean, what Goldman Sachs is doing, you know, with, with AWS, what Walmart's doing with Azure, connecting their on-prem tools to those public clouds. 
you know, is that a super cloud? I mean, we're going to have to go back and really look at that definition. It's, is, or is it just kind of a, a SaaS that spans on-prem and, and, and cloud? So as I said, the further you go up the stack, the business case seems to wane a little bit, but there's no question in my mind that from an infrastructure standpoint, to your point about operations, there's a real requirement for super, what we call super cloud. Well, we're going to keep the conversation going, Dave. I want to put a shout out to our founding supporters of this initiative. Again, we put this together really fast, kind of like a pilot series, um, uh, inaugural event. We want to have a face-to-face -face event as an industry event. I want to thank the founding supporters. These are the people who donated their time, their resource to contribute content, ideas, and some, some cash. Not everyone uh, had committed some financial contribution, but we want to recognize the names here. VMware, Intuit, Red Hat, Snowflake, Acera, Alteryx, Confluent, Couchbase, Nutanix, Rafi Systems, Sky High Security, Aviatrix, Zscaler, Platform9, HashiCorp, uh, F5, and, and all the media partners. Without their support, this wouldn't have happened. And there are more people that wanted to weigh in. There was more demand than we could pull off. We'll certainly continue the SuperCloud conversation series here on theCUBE, uh, and we'll add more people in. And now, after this session, the ecosystem speak session. We're going to run all the videos of the big name companies. We have the Nutanix CEOs weighing in, Aviatrix to name a few. Yeah, let me, let, me, let me chime in. I mean, you got Couchbase talking about Edge, Platform 9's going to be on. Uh, you know, everybody, you know, Insic was poo-poo and Oracle, but you know, Oracle and Azure, what they did, two technical guys, developers are coming on. We dig into what they did, how we you from Zscaler. Paula Hansen is going to talk about going to market in a multi-cloud world. You mentioned uh, uh, Rajiv, the CEO of Nutanix, Ramesh, is going to talk about multi-cloud infrastructure. So that's yeah. going to run now for you know, quite some time here and some of the pre-records. So super excited about that. And I just want to thank the crew. I hope, guys, I hope you have a, a, a list of credits. There's too many of you to mention, but uh, you know, awesome jobs. So really appreciate the, the work that you did in a very short amount of time. Well, I'm excited. I learned a lot and my takeaway was that SuperCloud's a thing. There's consensus that people want to talk about it and have real conversations, not BS or FUD. They want to have real substantive conversations and we're going to enable that on theCUBE. Uh, Dave, final thoughts for you. Well, I mean, there, as I say, we put this together very quickly. It was really a phenomenal, you know, enlightening experience. I think it confirmed a lot of the concepts and the premises that we've put forth, that David Floyer helped evolve, that a lot of these analysts have helped evolve, that even Charles Fitzgerald with his antagonism help to really sharpen our knives. So, you know, thank you, Charles. And uh, I like and his John, blog, by the way, I'm a reader. And, and yeah, absolutely. And it was great to be back in Palo Alto. This is my first time back since, yeah. uh, since pre-COVID. So, right. you know, great job. All right, I want to thank all the crew and everyone. Thanks for watching this first inaugural SuperCloud event. We are definitely going to be doing more of these. So stay tuned, maybe face-to-face -face in person. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante now for the ecosystem chiming in and they're going to speak and share their thoughts here with theCUBE, our first live stage performance event in our studio. Thanks for watching.